this is a short summary of IL-17 pathways. And the first thing that I'm going to touch upon is the uh, exact, you know, the different TH phenotypes. There's a more complete video in my YouTube channel on the TH phenotypes. And one of them is TH17. But the other two are very prominent, not only in disease, but also in our natural way of defending the organism against danger signals. It's Th1, Th2, and Th17, which is the one that we're going to be focusing on in this talk. In summary, the three key phenotypes are going to be Th1, basically driven by the IL-12, and interferon gamma, produces a cytokine profile that's very characteristic of Th1. It will induce responses by macrophages, which basically will work on responding to many bacteria, viruses like, in, like uh, the uh, flu virus, tissue repair, like when we cut ourselves, foreign bodies, and basically the mechanism is triggering phagocytosis and cell killing the cell that is either uh, needs the, to be repaired or has the virus or the bacteria. The interleukin-4 triggering the Th2 response with a very characteristic cytokine profile that stimulates basically the eosinophil. So the key target cell in the Th2 is the uh, eosinophil. That's the best way our bodies can deal with allergens. And the way or the mechanism by which it works is a topic mechanism using IgE and antibody-mediated mechanisms for cell destruction. And finally, we have the Th17s, which will act upon the neutrophil and the associated response is dealing with danger that is from candida, other fungal infections, and several other bacteria. And the main mechanism that is producing is also phagocytosis and inflammation. So the way that cytokines signal uh, is, generally speaking, as I'm depicting in this cartoon, so it's a generic cell that has a purple cytoplasm and the green nucleus. Um, you can see there in orange, I depicted a hypothetical receptor. And then the teardrop, blue teardrop, would be the soluble ligand. So in this case, let's talk about IL-17, which is the pathways that we are discussing. So cytokine would typically engage the receptor. Uh, this cytokine in the Th17 pathway could be either cytokines like IL-23 or IL-21 that trigger differentiation into a Th17 cell or an IL-17 engaging its own receptor on the target cells, as I mentioned before, on the phenotypes would be basically on neutrophils, which are the, the key target cell, although, although keratinocytes and other cells also respond to IL-17. Coming back to the way that it works, the cytokine engages a receptor. As I mentioned, the example, if, if this is talking about IL-17 engages a receptor, this engagement will activate the receptor basically by using kinases, which phosphorylate. This phosphorylation will go undergo on secondary messengers or directly to the signal transduction and activators of genes transcription. These are factors that translocate to the nucleus and produce gene transcription. So this is the way that typically, if we think about uh, an IL-17 engaging the surface of a neutrophil, the gene transcription here will be actually directing the target cell, uh, like the neutrophil, into producing different kinds of proteases or activating its own system for phagocytizing and killing the infected cell. So this is the way that generally it works. When we use biosimilars or biologics, basically what they do is block physically um, 
block the either receptor or the soluble cytokine. So IL-17 is a very good example on how extracellularly biologics work by either binding with an antibody binding the receptor on the cells and then the cytokine that's circulating cannot engage and there's no signal or they actually bind the soluble cytokine and the effect would be the same. The cytokine cannot engage the receptor and there's no signal. That is the example of uh, biologics using the IL-17 pathway. In this cartoon, I have actually depicted a hypothetical cell uh, just to show how the many different receptors can have intracellular signaling mechanisms. In the case of the interleukin-17, this particular receptor has three chains and it will actually communicate internally using different superfamily secondary messengers. It does use the NF-kappa B signaling cascade. It also will use the PI3K cascade and the MAP kinase cascade. It's a very complicated intracellular mechanism for the different signaling and it is not a, a separate superfamily. This particular receptor uses different superfamily signalings intracellularly. The complexity of the intracellular communication is uh, another signal of how important this signaling is. Uh, we do use the interleukin-17 in, in, uh, in response to several different infections, especially fungal infections, candidiasis, etc. And it is one of the pathways that it's triggered by the toll-like receptor activation. So in the interleukin-17 receptor, we have different receptors and we have actually different kinds of interleukin-17. It's a family of interleukins. But interleukin A and F, which have been better characterized because of their prominent um, activity uh, in psoriasis, in psoriatic arthritis, and in, test in an inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, these particular two cytokines bind the same receptor. And this receptor will signal through many different internal kinase activation pathways, as mentioned. This is one of the reasons why blocking interleukin-17 with a biologic that works extracellularly can immediately inhibit all of these different cascade of events and ultimately inhibit the signal transduction that IL-17 produces, causing different inflammatory cytokines and also some interesting stabilization of chemokine mess messenger RNA. Uh, IL-17 is used for a lot of different pathways and it's a very interesting cytokine family and TH phenotype. So again, uh, it is very good using it externally with a biologic that blocks the extracellular binding of the cytokine, there's no more engagement with the receptor, there will be no phosphorylation and no activation. In this cartoon, what I have shown here is a typical uh, TH pluripotent cell and what would be the different pathways that have to do with the TH17 differentiation. In other words, what makes this particular T cell start producing IL-17? So what we see is that interleukin-27 and interferon gamma will signal through the STAT1 activation and that inhibits directly STAT3. So STAT3 is the activation uh, factor that directly will produce a gene transduction into an IL-17 secretion. So the STAT1 activation via the IL-27 and interferon gamma inhibits STAT3 and also not only directly but through the TBET secondary messengers. Interleukin-4 through the STAT6 activation inhibits the phosphorylation of STAT3. Interleukin-2 through the STAT5 
will inhibit the activation of STAT3. And interleukin-12, through the STAT4 activation, will inhibit STAT3. So all of these pathways, what they're doing is basically inhibiting a TH17 differentiation. So starting from the left, interleukin-27 is associated with a phenotype that is a TH regulatory cell. Interleukin-4 is the major trigger for TH2 differentiation. So while it's promoting TH2 phenotype, it's inhibiting the TH17 phenotype by inhibiting STAT3. Interleukin-2 is one of the major products of uh, the TH1 phenotypic expression, and it will inhibit the TH17 phenotype, and interleukin-12 is actually one of the major drivers for the differentiation into Th1. So differentiation into Th1 or Th2 or T regulatory cells will be done through this activation of the JAK-STAT pathways that not only stimulate their corresponding Th phenotypic expression, but all, all of them at the same time as phosphorylating their respective stats are going to be inhibiting the STAT3 that is associated with the TH17 phenotype. So this is one mechanism by which a TH17 will be uh, inhibited from phenotypic differentiation. These are the ones that inhibit the TH17 pathway. Interleukin-23 uh, will directly phosphorylate STAT3 as well as interleukin-21 and interleukin-6. So they will directly signal through the JAK-STAT pathway, phosphorylate the STAT3, and there's two different effects. One of them through the ROR gamma, intranuclear uh, transcription factor, it will directly stimulate the synthesis of interleukin-17. So th these pathways are going to promote a TH17 phenotype. STAT3 can directly bind the nucleus, you know, the gene <coughs> transcription, and through the NFAT transcriptor fa factors will also stimulate IL-17 synthesis. But in addition, it also stimulates the, the genetic uh, expression and transcription of the uh, interleukin-21, which is one of the major uh, factors that stimulates TH17, as you can see at the top. So it's a product, but it's also a stimulation of the STAT3. And it's a, a big promoter of TH17 differentiation. Uh, in addition, they also, uh, through the STAT3 phosphorylation, will increase the expression of the IL-23 receptor, again, uh, augmenting the response to IL-23 into a TH17 differentiation. The TGF-beta receptor through the SMADs seems to have also a positive effect on interleukin-17 production. And finally, the T-cell receptor through NFAT directly goes into the nucleus and stimulates IL-17. These are basically the pathways that will promote a TH17 differentiation. Uh, when we're looking at diseases that could be mediated by TH17, we need to understand that what we need to do is to decrease the uh, TH17 phenotype. One of the oldest treatments available in psoriasis was retinoid acid. And now we understand that through the receptor of retinoid acid, it actually will inhibit the ROR gamma phosphorylation. So it does inhibit the production of IL-17. And hence, uh, it has efficacy in treating uh, psoriasis, for instance. Now, in addition of cytokines uh, mediating through the STAT1 and STAT5, the inhibition of STAT3, these particular STAT phosphorylations will also go directly into a FOXP3 gene stimulation of these T regulatory cells. So not only the IL-27 inhibits differentiation directly by inhibiting STAT3 of TH17 uh, cells, 
but it also directly will stimulate this, the differentiation into a T regulatory cell that carries a FOXP3 gene. Likewise, also the interleukin-2 is not only directly inhibiting STAT3 via the STAT5, but it also will produce a phenotype that is a T regulatory cell and not the TH17 cell. So there's a lot of different pathways associated with the TH17 uh, phenotype. And even though interleukin-17 does not signal through the CHAK-STAT pathways, the production of IL-17 is dependent on the JAK-STAT pathways of signal and transduction. To create this uh, particular file and uh, the animations and the cartoons, I have uh, consulted many different uh, literature reviews and different papers, but these are the ones that I would highly recommend, and I will put them in the YouTube description. Thank you for listening.